Okay, I'm here near Griggsville, Illinois, looking for Zelf's Mound. Uh, that's the mound that the Zions Camp and Joseph Smith uh, found in the 1800s when they were marching to Missouri here. Uh, has the bones of an ancient Lamanite warrior, supposedly. So, if you navigate to Naples Russell's Mound number eight, you will get to this corner here. It is the corner of 300th Avenue and 470th Street. And from this corner, I should be able to take a right under 300th Avenue and find perhaps a half a mile or a mile, not too far up a small parking lot where I can park and start my hike. Okay, it was about four tenths of a mile up that extremely narrow road. My vehicle just barely fit, but I found the uh, trailhead here. You can see the sign is deteriorated, but this is the sign at the beginning of the uh, trail that goes to the mound. So we're gonna give it a shot here and uh, see if I can make my way through the weeds here and see if we can find this thing. You can see the trail's pretty overgrown here. Not much traffic out here in the wilderness. But uh, it is fairly wide, or at least it was wide at one point. But uh, you can see it's, uh, can, you can barely see the ground here. Pretty thick, and, but, uh, but pretty easy to follow so far. So anyway, hopefully this uh, works out. You can see uh, that there's a farmer's field of corn here. As soon as you see the farmer's field, you just uh, take a left. And this trail is going to follow the perimeter of this cornfield. So... Uh, I'm just going to, following around the edge of this cornfield, hoping that it should get me to the mound. Okay, I'm maybe about halfway there, walking around the perimeter of the cornfield. You can see there's really almost no trail at all. It's just completely overgrown. So the only real guidance you have is just walking along the edge between the corn and the weeds. Some places it's, there's a little bit of room, like right here. Other places it's just, you have to push through either corn or the weeds, take your choice, but yeah, yeah. The only thing you have to follow is the edge of the field. Okay, made it around the cornfield and to, to the spot right here where there's supposed to be a post marking the trail where you get off to uh, uh, take a left and, you know, hike to find the mound. And probably only maybe 20, 30, 40 yards from the mound. But uh, you can see here, it's completely overgrown. Grown. I have no idea where that marker post is. So all I've got is the GPS on my phone. Unfortunately, the GPS marker does mark exactly where this Naples, Russell's Mount 8 is. And, uh, and fortunately, my phone's still working in this particular spot here. Um, but actually, the, uh, the, the marker on my map seems to work whether I have cell phone coverage or not. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to use dead reckoning with my phone here to that GPS spot, which is going to take me through this, uh, all this brush and wilderness right here. And then I should be able, I should be there. We'll see if this works. Hallelujah, I found it. Uh, probably more like 50, 100 yards through brush and spider webs and stuff. Well, I was just about starting to doubt whether I'd find it or not. But uh, here it is. A sign obviously uh, tells a story, but this is obviously... The mound, and I want to be very respectful because this is an Indian burial mound. There's bones that were buried here, but you can see there's no doubt that when I got here, it's this thing sticks up quite prominently. It's pretty clear there's a little uh, path around it. I'm kind of walking around the perimeter of it here, but there's uh, no doubt about it. This uh, is an unnatural thing. It's not part of the landscape. Maybe I could back up just a little bit here. Give you some idea, but yeah, it's uh, pretty uh, pretty big, probably 20 yards, 30, 40 yards length, and who knows, maybe 100 yards around it, uh, something like that. But uh, I don't know, maybe hard to see here in the camera, but this is definitely Zelf's Mound. So here I am standing atop Zelf's Mound. I feel this is a sacred place. I should probably take my hat off to honor the sacredness of this place as this was a uh, Indian burial ground. Uh, and the story goes when uh, Joseph Smith and the Zions Camp March came through this part of Illinois that they stopped the camp here and uh, found this mound and uh, they were inspired to uh, dig into it and just they had to dig not very far at all. They found this human skeleton here and Joseph prophesied that it was the bones of a 
of a Lamanite warrior named Zelf. That's where that comes from. He, uh, uh, and he was, at the time of King Onondagus, I believe it was the King Ogundeus was the king of all the Indians and all, everybody in the land at that time. But anyway, um, so and interestingly enough, uh, in recent modern history, I don't know, some, some not too many years ago, the uh, Illinois archaeologists uh, dug into the same mound here and brought up artifacts and, and bones, and I don't know the details, but I know that uh, the modern archaeologists uh, uh, some, took some of those artifacts and dated them and, and went back roughly to, I believe, about 1000 AD to maybe 100 or a couple hundred years, 200 BC. So uh, the, the dating of modern technology agrees and would tend to corroborate the uh, ancient story of Joseph Smith and his friends. So anyway, it's a sacred special place in, to me. And uh, I'm going to turn around and, and head back here because I, I started this adventure about 5 o'clock and uh, it's July. So yeah, summer's, the sun's up for another few hours, but I want to get back uh, well, I can still remember how I got here. So anyway, a great adventure. By the way, if anybody tries to redo this trip, I would recommend parking your car um, at the corner of the 300 Street or where I showed you, and then just hiking that four tenths of a mile into the trailhead that I showed because it's a very difficult road. And if you got stuck, you wouldn't be able to turn around. So hopefully I will get out of here. Okay, because there's, there's no place to turn around on that road. And, uh, it's just an extremely narrow, difficult road, so I would recommend just hiking in and not risking your vehicle on the road like I did. <laughs> Maybe I'll report back in a minute and make sure that I get out safely with my vehicle. Anyway, hope this was helpful to some. Okay, made it out of the forest and back around the cornfield and through all the messiness around the cornfield and back to the uh, base point here. Find my trusty 2023 Hyundai Tucson is still here, no problem. So now the last Little stage of the battle is driving out of here. So uh, hopefully I'll have some good news in just a minute when I get through this little road here. Okay, here we go, driving out the road. I'll just video a little bit of this just for fun here. The most sketchy part is you can see there's a tree that's fallen over the road here and my car just barely fits under it. So we're gonna go right there, right under that tree. Got a few scrapes from some uh, branches. So yeah, that was one of the scariest parts of the trail. up on another fallen tree here not as close as the other ones really no problem and a bunch of overhanging branches very narrow spot here but we can push through it not too bad i guess maybe it's not as bad as i thought okay i made it out alive back to the starting point here so the road really isn't that hard to drive the problem is that it's so narrow there's no place to turn around so if any of those trees had been blocking me i would have been forced to either back all the way out or somehow chop the tree down or move it away or something like that. Or if traffic, heaven forbid, came the other way, you'd have to back quite a ways to get out of there. So that's the main risk. And it is kind of nice to have a four wheel drive car. My sons, uh, uh, Alan and Brian and son-in-law Danny will all be proud of me that I uh, did a little almost kind of off-roading kind of stuff here. Although it's nothing compared to the kind of off-roading that they do. But anyway, how an old man can do a little bit of fun driving in dirt here anyway. So anyway, that was my adventure. It was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, Zelf's Mound is a real place. And uh, if you believe the story, it's a pretty cool story. Uh, Lamanites and Nephites probably once roamed these areas here. According to Joseph Smith, he kind of called this the Plains of the Nephites as he was hiking through this area here. So uh, beautiful place.